state to state properties. This is Teddy DiBiase, the Bay Dollar Man. Hey, this is Bob Daffling. Hey, everyone, this is Rick Stein. This is the Honky Dog Man, the greatest WWE Intercontinental Champion of all time. This is your wrestling show, Ottawa. Heck, they could use you guys over in WWE. You're listening to the greatest wrestling show in the whole wide world. This is Wrestling with Ideas. Welcome inside the CKDJ studios for Wrestling With Ideas right here on CKDJ 1079, Ottawa's new music. I'm the man they call Gibby Zach McGibbon, of course, just by the bi-weekly co-host, now really more weekly. <laughs> I think we're going to go with weekly for now. Weekly for now. You know, you, you told me that you were bi-weekly and you have ever since then he's just been on the show every week. So I think we're going to go with that until I'm told otherwise. But we've got a special third host, yeah. special guest co-host here. You may have heard him ask the questions here on the show. Uh, he's looking off. He's kind of like Bruiser Brody right now, just kind of looking off into the distance. I feel more like Dean Douglas. Thank you very much. Okay, I, I apologize. I apologize. I've got with me uh, Jonathan Skuse on the show. Thank you. Thank you. And please, it's the man with no excuses. The man with no excuses. You right. see, already I was gonna be. I was gonna come in and I was gonna be like, now it's tradition on this show to give a nickname. But you went right in. You already know this. So you already gave yourself a nickname. So you are the man with no excuses, Jonathan Skuse. I and like it. M- and much like our next topic, I think we're going to be talking about new traditions. Yes, new traditions with the uh, hashtag all in. That's probably the biggest story, if not the biggest story in wrestling right now. Oh, for sure. Now, uh, let's just go through some of the, the details here. Firstly, uh, all in. Uh, I don't know if you've heard, but it's a pretty big indie show that's going on in Chicago. Um, yeah. I think Cody Rhodes is involved with this thing. I oh, that's you... Stardust, right? Yeah, <laughs> Stardust. There you okay, go. Okay, okay. Um, also, uh, Dashing Cody Rhodes, you may have remembered him as. The Rhodes Scholar Cody Rhodes? That Ro- Cody Rhodes. Um, also, too, uh, the Young Bucks are involved with the, this yeah. project as well. And uh, the goal was initially brought up after Dave Meltzer said, uh, I think about a year ago now, in a tweet saying it'd be really tough for somebody like a Ring of Honor or a New Japan to get 10,000 people in the building. And Cody saw that tweet. He said, I'll take you up on that bet. And uh, since then, you have this all-in show. And they've done a really good job marketing this show. Uh, talking, bringing in some big guests. Uh, you've got, obviously, the StarCast as well, the podcast row. I do, I'll say it right now. We're not involved with StarCast. Not yet. Not, not yet. Do you want to go to You want to go to Chicago? I'm down. You're down? Well, I need I need to pay some money first. <laughs> I yeah. think also, also all the spots are occupied. So. Ah. Ah, well. So, but uh, no StarCast for us this year. But, hey, if they do another all-in show, maybe maybe we'll join in. Absolutely. We'll, we'll bring you with us. I would love to come see y'all. Once your leg gets all fixed up, we should be good to go. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we should probably bring this up as well. You are currently on one leg right now. Yes, yes. As some of you saw on Raw this Monday, Jinder Mahal got speared by Roman Reigns through a sheet of drywall. Now, I'm not that much better than Jinder Mahal. I had a little drywall (laughs) fall on my leg, but I think much like Jinder Mahal, I'll be up and walking, and who knows, maybe I might take it to Roman Reigns sometime soon. There you go. Well, you've got the crutch, so maybe you can still attack people with it. Crutch? You mean my Tommaso Ciampa stick? Yes, there you go. (laughs) There you go. I was just about to bring up Tommaso Ciampa, so there you go. (laughs) Um, I thought actually somebody pilmanized your leg. Nope, nope. That's just the retro WWF logo. Oh, back when it was big gold letters. There you go. Uh, back to All In, though. Yes, back yes. That's All In. Uh, so they released the tickets this past Sunday. And uh, how do you think the tickets went? Oh, I, just, I mean, who's even heard of half of these stars? Am I right? I know, right? Like the tickets. It's almost like uh, this is an important show or something. I know, right? Hold on. I'm just going to check StubHub right now and oh my God. <laughs> oh, yes. We'll definitely get uh, talk about that. But uh, in less than half an hour, I believe Cody Rhodes tweeted out saying 29 minutes, 46 seconds. Yep. The all-in show sold out. 10,000 tickets sold out like that. Incredible. That I'm is like- something that I don't think any of us predicted i didn't think that they were going to sell out it within that day i thought they were going to sell out up until the show maybe i'm yeah. sure they were going to get quite a few people they announced a couple more names you know because 
you know, you had they they had a couple of good names. Obviously, Kenny Omega, Okada's there as well. Mm-hmm. You got Stephen Amell, who's a big uh, star in the television scene as Green Arrow. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and of course you got Cody, the Young Bucks, Hangman, Man, yeah. all the being the Elite Squad. Plus, you got you know Tessa Blanchard, Chelsea Green, Britt Baker, uh, Joey Janela is going to be there as well. So Ooh. they've got a they've got a good squad going. But yeah, and and and, and also recently they announced Rey Mysterio to be at the show on the All In show. So they got they had a good card. Well, um, but I didn't think anybody thought that they were going to sell it this quickly. Well, I mean, when you have people like Cody Rhodes, the Young Bucks, uh, Okada, I believe, is there as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People in the States would, I believe, now seeing after this, would jump at the opportunity to see these guys wrestle while Josh Barnett and JR aren't on commentary. Oh, my God. Yeah, let's, let's, let's. If they do do that live eye pay per view sort of deal, or they do that streaming option, mm-hmm. I don't think I don't think those guys are going to get involved. That's more access TV. But um, but they sold out ten thousand tickets within under thirty minutes. Um, and uh, I guess I'll go over to you, Scoose. Did you expect this at all? Like, did you first? Did you expect them to sell out at all? This I show? I knew that they were going to sell out. I didn't know how soon it was going to be because with some events like this, it's all about corporate sponsors. Yep. Who's going to buy all these box seats? Yeah. And uh, well, I don't know anything about the corporate sponsors, but all the tickets are gone, man. Like, yeah. I didn't expect this to happen so soon, let alone in half an hour. Yeah, I don't think Cody expected this. I don't think the Bucks expected this. There's there was a tweet that Cody had sent out saying he just he had just spoken to his mom about how he had just sold out the show. Mm-hmm. And then his mom's response was, that's nice. Did you get your teeth cleaned yet? <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> Ah, the Isaac Yankum reference. There you go. Yeah, man. Um, and uh, what an interesting fact about this as well. Uh, I don't know if it's 20 years exact, but it's the first non-WWE show to have 10,000 people in a building. That's including TNA. That's including Ring of Honor. That's including New Japan. Uh, to go in the States, obviously. Ob- New Japan does well in their own country, if Japan. Well. But uh, in the States, it's the first non-WWE promotion quote-unquote to sell out a 10,000 seat building uh since the wcw days so this is a big deal uh especially for independent wrestling and i think there's a lot of things that can contribute to the success of all in but the first thing that comes to my mind immediately is the marketing behind it because i think the idea that they wanted to go for was this is the wrestlemania of indie wrestling absolutely oh for sure so 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 they marketed this thing super well they wanted to make it feel like everybody's involved with this. You know, we want to make this a big deal and it's going to change the status quo. All the marketing behind this was excellent. And, right. and, and Cody and the young bucks, whatever, you, you know, your opinion is on, on those guys. I know, obviously there's the Jim Cornettes of the world. That's not a big fan of the bucks, right? It's been well known, but whatever your thoughts on those guys, you have to admit that the marketing behind it and to be able to get fans enticed into the show was brilliant the way they had it overlaid. And obviously, you know, you have some good star power involved with this as well. So to me, that was the ultimate key was the marketing of this. Um, and number two as well, I think people, including myself, uh, really uh, underrated how popular they were. Because a lot of the mm-hmm. arguments were that the t-shirt sales that they had of the Hot Topic, the Bullet Club shirts, some people had made the argument that, well, you know, they kind of saw the shirt and it was super cool, so they bought it. Um, but the T-shirt sales don't lie, as we learned, uh, in terms of popularity. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I think as well, we kind a lot of people really underrated their ability to be popular and to draw. Um, and I'm sure this is probably the biggest winner of all this is is Cody, in my opinion, in terms of leaving WWE, becoming a bigger star, and now putting on his own show with uh, very limited involvement with other promotions, except of course the NWA, which we'll talk about as well. Um, and being able to promote the show on his own, and and he really comes across as one of the biggest stars in wrestling right now, wouldn't you not say? Oh, I would absolutely say that. I'd say that the way that he's booking things, like for this show, it's going to be a little testy, but until mm-hmm. it happens, I think it's going to be great, and the better it is, you know, I think that his father would be really proud of him with oh, what he's sure. doing right now. Absolutely. Dusty Rhodes would Without be very question. proud. Mm-hmm. And. One of the things that was interesting as well was there was that press conference that was released before this. uh, On the same day that the tickets were announced, they did a press conference 
One of the things I am a little concerned about, but I think they will solve this. I don't know if you saw the press conference. It was being recorded off of a cell phone. I saw a little bit of it, yeah. On uh, It was being recorded off of a cell phone onto Twitch and onto the uh, One Hour Tease Facebook uh, page. Right. So I'm like, oh, if that's going to be the case and if they are going to record the show for, you know, if they are going to record the show, if they are going to do a stream, uh, you know, how will the quality of the show be? But I think, you know, that's not really the goal, right? The goal is really just we can, we're going to prove to people that we can sell out a 10,000-seat building. It's what Dave Meltzer said. Dave Meltzer didn't say that he wanted a million buys pay-per-view worldwide. Yeah. He said 10,000 people in an in, arena. In an arena. And, and it's done. And, they've, and they, you know, they did a good job scouting. I think Chicago, obviously, is a fantastic place to promote professional wrestling. Oh, for sure. Chicago, New York, even Philly. Those were probably the three main places that you want to promote your wrestling brand. And maybe maybe if you were in the hotter area of the southern territories, maybe like a Georgia would also be a nice yeah. place. So I was that was one of the only reasons why I was a little surprised maybe Cody didn't go for like an Atlanta or something like that, only because it's like close to home. Right. Um, and the most amazing part about this too, we only had one match announced for this show. And it wasn't even like a full match. Like we were under the impression – uh, that Cody's going to challenge for the NWA world title. And currently the NWA world champion is Nick Aldis slash Magnus, which you can listen to the full interview, by the way, with Magnus back in the archives. Right. Got to shill the product here. But uh, now in terms of the rest of the card, the way it's going to shape up, uh, wh- what do you think the match is going to look like? I'll start with you, Skuse. Uh, what's the, what's, what do you think the match card is going to look like for All In? Now that, now that they've sold 10,000 seats, they really don't need this mega buster of a match. Like, they have Okada and Omega. They don't have to do Okada Omega 5 or however, <laughs> you know, that's going to be. So how do you think that card is going to shape up? Ooh, I don't know. I think it all depends on what their promotions that they're in respectably is doing with them also. Um, who knows? We could just have an Omega doing a singles match, or we could just have the Gold Lovers. I don't know. Who knows? I mean, they haven't announced the Bushi, but you never know. Oh, right. you never know. The only the only New Japan guy they announced, like affiliated with New Japan, is Okada. So you never know. I mean, it's like, yeah. um, but uh, also too, uh, streaming options is is something. I that don't. Last I heard, I haven't seen anything saying that they were going to do streaming. I thought I had seen from Cody himself that it said that they weren't planning on doing it. Well, I think they they've been doing that mainly because. If they say there's streaming options, then some people will be like, oh, well, I don't have to go to the show. I could just watch right. on my... But now that it's been sold out... But now out. that it's sold out, now they're probably going to look at streaming options. That way they get a bigger platform. Right. Um, if, you're, if you're Cody, mm-hmm. where are you going to stream? Are you going to do the Fight TV route? Are you going to do maybe Twitch? Twitch and do Twitch tips instead of... Yeah, do Twitch tips if you wanted to. Like, you could do Twitch. I think Twitch has been working really good for Impact right now. And right. Oh, yes. I don't see why Cody wouldn't uh, take a little out of their bag and go straight to the Twitch option. Twitch option, um, Fight TV. Um, maybe if Reign of Honor wants to get a cut of the pie. Oh, you know they do. Yeah, they probably do. Um, maybe it'll end up on Honor Club. You never know. I would hope so. Um, I'm sure. I'm sure they could get some of that Sinclair broadcasting money involved and uh, record the show. Um, so, it, I mean, th- there are options there. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I think Twitch could be a good option. Right. Obviously, you mentioned Impact Wrestling. Yeah. Uh, with the with the tips. Um, there's not just even Impact. House of Hardcore is on Twitch now. Mm-hmm. Uh, AAW in Chicago is on Twitch. Um, there's there's a lot more promotions that are yeah. utilizing Twitch. 83 weeks, even podcasts. 83 weeks with Eric Bischoff. I, I like the uh, the Twitch aspect of it a lot in terms of what they have as options. Yeah, because it'll let Cody and the Young Bucks know what fans like, which matches the fans like the most. Yeah, in terms of how much money they get, like how many tips they get yeah. per match. Uh, Wrestle Circus as well. I should probably bring up there yeah. the originators. Um, but uh, I mean, Twitch could be an option. Um, pay per view, maybe even the they do something with the NWA. I mean, the NWA is going to be there to record the match, so you never know. It could just be an NWA versus Bullet Club match. That could be something. Uh, so Ooh. you could have Tim Storm and 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 Nick Aldis slash Magnus and uh, who's the other guy there? The bigger guy. Oh man, uh, Josephus is in a trios <laughs> and then you have oh my god you can have a trios match yeah the trios match you maybe have skrull and with the young cody bucks. and the young bucks or co- yeah oh, cody nobody's young challenging bucks. the nwa so yeah you might want to put skrull omega or- the young bucks i want to see tim storm versus kenny omega right now 
You just changed my mind. I was about <laughs> to throw Hangman Adam Page in there, but Omega, done. Omega versus yeah. Tim Storm? I'm sold. <laughs> Maybe I can throw some... Uh, NWA over into my fantasy booking that I'm doing over on the WrestleCast. Oh, there you go. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much what's going on for All In. Uh, in terms of, are you going to try and seek out this show? Absolutely. For absolutely, sure. Absolutely. absolutely. Without question. Now, if if they were to charge you for the stream, let's say they offer, because I'm assuming they're not really, I mean, obviously they want to get some of their money back, but let's say they charge five ninety nine for the stream. I don't oh, think yeah. it's going to be that. You would you would pay for oh, that? Oh, yes. One stream, one time, five bucks. That's Let's see. That's half your WWE network right there, so there absolutely. You there you go. And the match quality is arguably better. The whole show, <laughs> the whole card is probably better than all of the matches you can get on Raw and SmackDown for an entire yeah, month. That's well, true. by star rating alone. Yeah, by star <laughs> rating alone. And one last thing before we head to commercial break, the Dave Meltzer stuff. We were talking about this off air. So one of the segments that they were thinking of talking about is having Dave Meltzer come to the middle of the ring because he is going to be there. He's part of the star cast. He could go into the middle of the ring and give Cody Rhodes the dollar and have that like start off the show, let's say. How, how do, you, do you think that's possible? You oh, yeah. You can see that segment. Why not? I know Dave's down for it. I think that if they do this segment, Dave should portray a little bit of a bitter heel because he Ooh. said it couldn't be done and Cody just went and did it. So I think maybe Dave goes up, holds up the dollar bill, and just rips it in half and oh storms God. off stage. I could just I could just see the Wrestling Observer subscriptions go up only from here. Um, but, uh, yeah, all in. Congrats on uh, Cody and the Bucks and uh, whomever else is involved with the project. Of course, StarCast as well, being run by Conrad Thompson. Conrad Thompson. And he, he got a lot of people involved with that. I, literally every wrestler under the sun – is involved with StarCast. It's crazy. Except, of course, Vince Russo. Oof. Well, Did you see that whole ordeal? Well. <laughs> now, of course, he's going onto YouTube and cutting 40-minute promos on, on, on Cody Rhodes with all caps, of course, being Vince Russo obliterates <laughs> Cody Rhodes and quote-unquote homophobic comments. But uh, And then, of course, he did a 20-minute video afterwards doing a reflection on what he said the day before. What a guy. It's so, I, I, I'll just say it right here. It's so sad. Oh. It's so like, I, what I saw this, first he, he had like 20 tweets about it, and then he did a 40 minute video on it. Cody does not give a damn about Vince Russo. No, I don't think I do either, to be honest. I mean, no. he can take his bucket of chicken necks and take a walk if he wanted yeah. to. Yeah, and it's like 40 minutes and he's, and I, I watched the video because I hate myself. Oh. And I, literally the first, he's like, He's like, bro, I got to tell you, bro, with, when Cody Rhodes came to me and said, bro, I'm going to be part of StarCast, I said, bro, I'm all in. I'm hashtag all in. And, and then he just, uh, I, can't, I can't stand it. So I just wanted to say that because uh, it's, it's very easy to throw Vince Russo on the bu under the bus. But it's just like, you know, you just see this and you're like, he wrote the Attitude Era. Well, at least half of it. Like the first bit. But he wrote it. Like, it's like you see his tweets sometimes, too. It's like, small, small, all caps, space, space, dash, all caps, you know? The way he lay layers out his tweets is like, how did this guy write the attitude error? And I'm not saying he did, like, a terrible job. The figure poke of doom. The fig Well, I don't know if that was Russo, but that was, like... I would love to see what his scripts look like. I need to see a script now, too, yeah. I hope Russo, like, leaks out a script or something. <laughs> We need to see a script. An old right? Sunday Night Heat script. There you go. Yeah. I'd be down for that. I'm the halftime heat with with uh, Mankind. Let's see that one. I'm going to I'm gonna look for something like this now. we got to see it. Yeah. Anyways, we're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, uh, we're going to go into some more serious news um, with uh, Enzo Amore. Recently, uh, his case was dismissed. Insufficient evidence in, his, uh, in the rape allegations. We'll talk about that. Also, we'll talk about the announced Nia Jax Ronda Rousey match. And we got a great interview as well coming up with uh, Pat Lazinski uh, later on, who records the matches yeah. and show for C4. Yeah. So it should be a fun one. Uh, that's a light, nice little duel thing with uh, yeah, the WrestleCast. Man. It'll be put up on both of the shows. Yeah, there you go. Yep. It'll also air this Sunday. Mm -hmm. That'll be the interview because I just did a couple of interviews. Yep. I'll tease that later. Yep. We'll, uh, we'll take this quick commercial break. You're listening to Wrestling With Ideas right here on CKDJ 107.9, Ottawa's new music. Hey, this is Cody Rhodes, and you are listening to Wrestling With Ideas. Welcome 
back inside the CKDJ studios for Wrestling With Ideas right here on CKDJ 107.9, Ottawa's new music. I'm the man they call Gibby Zach McGibbon, alongside me the music man Colin Scully, and the man with no excuses, Colin, Colin Scully. No. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. There's no excuse in Colin Scully. There I'm sorry. Go. Jonathan Skuse, of course, is joining us. First episode live, well, live. Uh, We're in live, studio. <laughs> In studio. Um, the Scoose is here. Yeah. And uh, we are unfortunately going to have to talk about, I mean, I mean, it's good for him Yeah. in this case. But uh, usually I like to talk wrestling, but a lot of people are talking about this. So we will cover this here. Uh, Enzo Amore, there's a name some people may not have heard in a while. Uh, he was involved with that 205 Live brand. He was also a tag team with Big Cass. Surprisingly, never won the tag team championships during that time. Good. Looking back on it for WWE, he's like, thank God they didn't put the title on him. But um, especially with the situation that occurred here. They gave him the Cruiserweight title, and I'm still questioning as to why. Well, because he was popular. They finally just got over it, too. Yeah. They finally <laughs> just got over the hump of why did we put the belt on Enzo? Yeah, there you go. Um, but with Enzo More, uh, a lot of people you may have heard he had some rape allegations and uh, back in Arizona and uh, Phoenix, actually, specifically. And there was uh, he was going through that whole court case on his Twitter. His lawyer had tweeted out a statement on his Twitter account, and then he hadn't tweeted in like months since he tweeted that out slash his lawyer. Well, today, as we're recording this, uh, we were going through and a, nut, a statement was released again by his lawyer. Um, and it was confirmed that Eric Arndt, also known as Enzo Amore, uh, will not be prosecuted uh, for any charges uh, due to insufficient evidence to continue to move forward. Um, they stated that the, investig the investigation is closed. No one is charged. Uh, and the woman's not going to pursue any charges. Um, and, uh, that of course, that rape allegation was the thing yeah. that led him be, to be dismissed by the WWE. Yeah. Um, and, uh, now they did say, according to other, uh, news sources that reached out to the police, they said, if new information arises, they will reopen the case. But as of now, they have no evidence to pursue, uh, rape charges. So as it, as it had said that, as the uh, statement had said that the accuser, had decided not to pursue charges. Yeah. How much of... Well, well I mean, the, the prosecutors couldn't find enough evidence right. to, proceed with, uh, to proceed with charges. So um, that's, that's more along that line. Mm -hmm. um, one of the interesting things that came out of that statement as well is that Eric Arndt slash Enzo Amore is working on his next venture in the entertainment industry. What, what that means, who knows? He could be talking wrestling. He could be talking about that rap career. I think that's exactly what he's talking oh. about. He's always been chatty about his rap career. I think that it might just start sometime soon. I mean, it, it's it's definitely a possibility. I mean, Enzo's a little bit out there as an individual. A uh, um, little bit? A little bit. But, you know, that was the one of the things that made people, you know, at first see Enzo in NXT because he was such an out there personality, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you had the wild hair, the the beard with the multiple ties in it, you know, and, and multiple colors in his beard and the wacky leopard outfits and that sort of stuff. And he had he, the catchphrase. And he's the only guy that the poop emoji on the overalls would work. <laughs> yes. yes. Oh, yes. That's Well, that, maybe if you're Big E. Those. Maybe if you're Big E. Well, maybe if you're Big E as well. I'm sure yeah. Big E could pull that. Anybody in the New Day, I think, could pull that off as well. Doing the crap emoji on the bottom there with the unicorns, maybe they could probably do that. I think they. If, now that you say that, I think they might have. Oh, they probably. Oh, did they probably. do that? Is there a pancake emoji? Probably. Well, there you go. <laughs> um, now, I guess there's the question is now, uh, do you bring Enzo Amore back into WWE? I think you got to give him some time to cool off because knowing Enzo Amore and how the world works today, I wouldn't be surprised if he sued the WWE for damage of his character, or countersued the person, I should say, for yeah. damage of his character. He lost his job because of it. Yeah. I don't know if he'll get back into wrestling, but I'm pretty sure he's going to be looking for a lawsuit sometime soon. Yeah, I think I, I do see maybe a countersuit uh, in the near future. Um, but, uh, I, I mean, the, the woman in... in in this case, also, uh, I believe, is a much younger woman as well. Yep. So maybe maybe he'll be like, you know, 
I'm not going to pursue any charges. He just wants to move on from this. That's also another possibility. Um, but uh, another thing, too, I mean, we were talking maybe a rap career that he could pursue. Um, could he potentially go Commentary? to one of the other wrestling companies? Because I was actually on the Impact Wrestling teleconference call today with Don Callis. Uh, it was a state of Impact Wrestling, and one of the guys that was uh, on the conference call asked the question about Enzo. And he said, never say never, essentially. What's Little Amore doing in the impact zone? <laughs> little, little Amore. Um, but, uh, you know, he said, never say never. He, he's got a long-term plan, and maybe Enzo could be uh, in that sort of future plan. Yeah. So Now, I mean, the only question that I have for this yeah. is, no doubt he would work as a character there. Yeah. Do they continue with the Enzo Amore name, though, because it's associated? I think WWE owns it, so I don't think they would. He, he was brought up in NXT, so I'm fairly yeah. certain that. Yeah. It's because it's not his name, right? It's Eric Arnst, right? So he, he'd he probably be like, I'm going to use my rapper name in, T, in TNA Impact. Uh, I could totally see him doing that if he wanted to pursue wrestling. I could totally see him going into the acting route because, you know, whatever you want to say about the guy, he, he had, definitely had a backstage rep. Apparently nobody liked him. No, just straight up. Nobody liked him. He was kicked off the tour bus from uh, Jericho. Um, I, I, I remember that whole ordeal. I think Reigns actually kicked him off. I was going to say, I thought it was Reigns, and we all know how over Reigns is right now. Yeah. So <laughs> you know, you know, things are going well when the when, well over the big dog, the big dog. Uh, it's boss time. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's you know you're uh, you're screwed when Reigns is kicking off the bus. Although he's very much a locker room leader. Uh, within WWE, c- probably because he's the top guy. Um, it's not like people don't like Reigns. It's just you know he's. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm talking. I'm talking backstage personally, not the wrestler. Okay. I, I'm talking. I'm. T- I'm not talking the character. I'm talking the person. Okay. All right. Because okay. I. Because I knew. I. Because I know his. I know his opinions on Roman Reigns, and I don't want to. We're talking about Joe here, not Reigns. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We're talking about Joe and Noe here, or or whatever. Uh, that's actually Roman Reigns. <laughs> no, it isn't. Joe Anoi? Anoai, sir. Anoai. I don't My think bad. his first name is Joe, though. It is. No, it is because of the memes that uh, a Samoan named Joe, Joe? or Samoa, Samoa Joe. Joe. There you go. Um, now back to Enzo. Uh, the Zo train. The Zo train. Uh, now, if he's, if he's not going back to wrestling, we already agreed. Probably rap. Maybe he could be a train conductor and just have a Zo train. Mm, ride the Zo train. Maybe he'll be at all in, and we just know nothing. Oh my god, maybe. I mean, there's. I mean, we'll see what there's Enzo's lo- going to do. We'd have to take a lot of rumor and speculation to get him on the card, but yeah. you never know if you're at all in and you hear that mandolin start to play. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, maybe, maybe you know, he he'll probably still be doing wrestling conventions because I'm sure he can make some money off. Well, I mean, he'll Virgil be sit- still does. Yeah, him. He'll be Virgil sitting beside Virgil. Him. Yeah, just like there Virgil. you go. There you go. He'll sit- those new career for Virgil 2.0. Oh my god! He used Don't to even be in a tag team Virgil. with somebody who's still in good books with the WWE for now. Yeah. Well, don't even get me started on Virgil. Uh, if you if you listen back at the Wrestling with Ideas archives, you can hear about Virgil and his and his appearance on Joey Janela's Spring Break Two Uncensored Review. Wrestling with Ideas You can yeah. listen back to that one. Um, but uh, yeah, any last uh, thoughts here on Enzo in terms of his release or well release more dismissal of the case um, and uh, where he goes from here? Maybe goes to Impact. Definitely not going to Reign of Honor. I think no. I, I I'd like to see him on Ring of Honor or uh, Impact. That'd be a hell of a match. Could you imagine Bull Dempsey versus Enzo Amore in a Ring of Honor ring? That's a barn burner right there. Yeah, but could you imagine Rich Swan versus Enzo Amore in an Impact ring? Mm, yeah, that could get into some very. I've seen you <laughs> before. Oh, the Spider Man Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> the Spider Man meme. You're going nowhere. <laughs> Where do you think you're going? But uh, I mean that. I mean that could be another potential thing. I don't know. It's obviously it's iffy. You got to give the guy a chance to re- regroup because obviously he even before then apparently he was around an, an environment where it's a bunch of drugs and stuff. So even then I think you got to give him the chance to try and at least prove to society that he's a changed man. So maybe that's what Impact Wrestling will do. Um, and then he goes back to WWE. You know, is you know, it's it, it. I could I could see him doing that. The only thing that I can really take a guess at is that 
he doesn't seem like the kind of guy who's very smart with his money, so I'm pretty sure he's going to be going after a large amount of that first thing he, as soon as he can. Yep. I, I think you are. Correct. I don't think he saved all of that WWE money. It might just well, be sent on all those shoes that he bought. If he <laughs> yeah. wants, if he wants money, why is he going to Impact? Ouch! Because they're hiring. <laughs> because they're hiring. Yeah. The tag team division is full in uh, WWE, but Impact's hiring. Um, if he goes into a let, let's say he gets hired by Impact, mm-hmm. and he they put him as a tag team. Yeah. Who does he team with? Uh, Enzo. Mm. Hmm, that's good. That's a good question. Eli Drake. But he's with Scotty, isn't he? Eli Drake, Scott Steiner, Enzo Amore. The promos, man. Oh my God. <laughs> Scotty <laughs> Steiner and Enzo cutting promos together? I think Eli it has Drake to be done. Eli Drake cut a mean promo as well. Absolutely, so. but when you put Scott Steiner in the mix, you see, you <laughs> yeah. got a seventy-five. He got a twenty. He got a seventy-five percent chance. Yeah, chances the, of screwing up a promo drastic go down. Drastic. Drastic. The math checks out how you're doing. <laughs> uh, with that, we're going to take another quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to go over uh, some of the big uh, results coming out of Raw and SmackDown. Uh, but we'll mainly talk about Rousey and Nia Jax and some of the logic behind that booking. You're listening to Wrestling With Ideas right here on CKDJ 107.9, Ottawa's new music. Hey guys, this is Flip Gordon, and you are listening to Wrestling With Ideas. Welcome back inside the CKDJ Studios for Wrestling With Ideas, right here on CKDJ 107.9, Ottawa's new music. I'm the man they call Gibby. Zach McGibbon alongside me, the music man, Colin Scully. And I'll say this right, the man with no excuses, Jonathan Skews. Well done. Well done. It it just sort of rolls off the tongue, you know? Does it really, though? It does. Now you're trying to, are you trying to delegitimize this show? I'm not trying to delegitimize this show. (laughs) I think he's starting a feud. I think we're starting a feud here. Well, he's got a crutch. The crutch is close by, so. I'll Tommaso you. Yeah, he'll Tommaso Ciampa me. Please don't do that. <laughs> Please. Um, so we'll go over some of the big highlights from both Raw and SmackDown. Yeah. There's a lot of things to talk about. Uh, we're just going to go over the major ones. One of the first things I want to talk about right away, uh, the announcement for Money in the Bank between Ronda Rousey versus Nia Jax for the Raw Women's title. Right away. Understandable. It broke before Raw even started. Exactly. So <laughs> Finally. Absolutely. And plus, Rousey is a big star, yes. so we'll, we have to talk about this now. Finally, the WWE is doing something right. Wow, you're actually this in the year. minority on that one. This, so this is going to make sort of very This is going to be a fun discussion. This is going to be a fun discussion. Okay, so now I guess we'll we'll go on ahead with this. Why do you like this decision for Jax and Rousey uh, this early on? Now, do I agree with the fact that Nia Jax is defending the title this early? No. Okay. okay. What I agree with is having Ronda Rousey in a singles match as arguably one of, if not, well, it's not going to be the main event, but it's going to be higher up on the card. It's no kickoff show. It's it's no kickoff show. It's no, no pre-show stopper. <laughs> it's not airing on YouTube. Yeah, no. yeah. No, I agree with the fact that they're actually booking Ronda Rousey properly. Okay. Interesting. Um, so so you like this decision. I like, I, I like putting Ronda Rousey against Nia Jax. Okay. But you don't like the fact that Nia has the title while they're doing it. Right. Okay. And and okay. I believe that Ronda versus Charlotte should be should be not not now. Well, obviously not now. But yeah. Mania 35. I was, I was, I was getting event, a little scared. Main event first time by women. I'm Res- WrestleMania. Oh yeah, I think that's the plan. Um so I am going to disagree with you, Mr. Colin. I I unfortunately have to disagree with you. Um but I don't think it's all bad. I don't think it's all bad uh, for this Rou- Rousey Jackson thing. To me, it reeks of desperation uh, in terms of just trying to get a high-profile feud, especially the way the backlash came together. <laughs> that was uh, all the backlash, so to speak, from that show. Um, but uh, I, I, I think people are jumping into it a little bit too much. So we, I think we're all in agreement that Rousey's not going to win the title, right? Uh, that's me. I'll uh, say that. 
you 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 think that you think that Ronda isn't gonna win? She's no. not gonna win the no. title. No, 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 no. And and the and the way she's not gonna win the title is Natalia. Yep. Yes. Natalia's gonna interfere. Now here's an interesting idea that I saw. I need to go find the tweet again because it's not my idea, and I want to give credit where credit's due, but I can't find it. So I saw an idea being passed around on Twitter, and it was a great idea, I think. So Natalia qualifies for the women's money in the bank. She wins the women's money in the bank. And she cashes in during the Jax Rousey match at Money in the Bank. Circuit Dean Ambrose. Yeah, okay. and then, but but or even like a Rollins. Yeah. But like as a backstabber to Rousey, and then Natalia wins the title, or or yeah, Natalia wins the title, and then Rousey and Natalia have a program. Or you can even do Natalia tries to cash in. She doesn't successfully win the title. Jax pins Natalia. Rousey feels like she's been backstabbed. You know what I mean? Yeah. She doesn't take the pinfall loss. She has a reason to go after the title, and she has a feud to go into SummerSlam with. Plus, we all know Natalia is very good in the ring. Right. So you can build a program between Natalia and Ronda Rousey up until SummerSlam if you wanted to. Mm-hmm. So that way you can help build Rousey's in-ring credibility because Natalia will definitely do that. Do you see a switching of sides almost, but with uh, Alexa Bliss aligning herself with Ronda Rousey? You could possibly see that. Um, if Bliss was to turn face, um, but uh, yeah. that's where I think it could go. That was an idea I saw passed around where uh, or Natalia wins the or in the bank. Natalia turns face, aligns herself with Nia Jax, and then Ronda Rousey turns heel and aligns herself with Alexa Bliss. I heel Rousey this fast. I don't think. heel. Yeah, I think he'll not Rousey necessarily this, this fast, but maybe around SummerSlam. If what you had said keeps going, yeah. But 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 the thing is, I'm saying this all happens in the same night. Oh. Yeah, so I'm saying she cashes in. Natalia wins the women's money in the bank. She cashes in the same night. Okay, that would make the match more enjoyable for me. The yeah. Ronda then, Rousey versus Nia Jax. And then screws, uh, screws uh, Rousey. Rousey out of the match. And then, uh, and then, but let's say Natalia screws up and Jax wins. So Jax keeps the title. But now there's another, there's a foil in Rousey's story. Yeah. And then you can do Rousey versus uh, you could do Rousey versus Natalia for the next little bit if you right. wanted to. And, and again, she's she's not like like she had a great match at WrestleMania. I thought it was probably the best match of the show. It didn't look like that anybody was carrying her that much either. No, it didn't. And plus, she had a couple of uh, in ring wrestling sessions, of course, beforehand. I think she had a year, maybe, maybe. I'm not 100 percent sure. I'm pretty so. sure she had some sort of training, um, but. Uh, even then, you know, you have another capable worker in the ring with Natalia to help her, you know, grow. Because mm-hmm. um, I, I think that's the way that they're going right now. Because if you just kind of look at it, it's like, wow, this is very soon for Rousey to go in. Like, you want to build to that Charlotte Charlotte Rousey match, that's right? That's very so. interesting. I like I like your idea. I don't have the same idea. I think that it's going to be a build up to the four horsewomen versus the four horsewomen. Okay. Ooh. And that's because it's a... T- Dual branded pay per view. Yeah, there's a good chance that Charlotte, Becky, Sasha, they're all going to be there. Yeah, and all of the horsewomen are now signed to WWE. You don't want that match for Mania. I'm not saying it's going to be at SummerSlam, maybe the yeah. Rumbler or Survivor Series. Yeah, but I think that Natty doesn't win the Money in the Bank. It's going to be somebody different. I yeah. think that they're going to use this as a pawn yeah. for the four horsewomen versus four horsewomen. Okay. Now so going going off basically. As much as I want to see Natalia win the women's Money in the Bank, mm-hmm. I don't think they just have enough stuff. specifically for the purpose of having her try to cash in. Yeah, I hope to God Becky Lynch wins, wins it. The, wins the women's oh Money in the Bank. Oh my God, she's like one of the top baby faces in the company, in my opinion. But, yes. um, but I I would love to see Becky win it as well. Right. But I think just for storyline purposes, because there's only one women's Money in the Bank, right? So. Yeah. Um, so I, I mean, that's where I see the, it going, but you know, they could, I, I do think, you know, that four horsewoman versus four horsewomen. It's going to happen at some point and they're you know, all side now. So they that could definitely main scenes. event a WrestleMania. It I mean, could, it and, could. and maybe could the WrestleMania, do. WrestleMania 35. Yeah. It's already rumored to be Rousey versus Charlotte. Charlotte. You're just adding more bodies onto the pile. Yeah. There you go. So, so maybe you could actually, if they wanted to, they could rush Rousey versus Charlotte at SummerSlam. Just a question. Sorry, go sorry, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say you could main event uh you can main event SummerSlam with Rousey versus Charlotte if you wanted to. Oh for sure. But I, I think I, I hated that decision by the way for Carmella to beat Charlotte clean. After Oscar, that was the worst decision. After a match that and, and after that sort of match too. And after the iconics. 
the Iconics. They have I'm going to do an impression. Uh oh. No, no, the Iconics doing the impression. Oh, okay. Like, oh. oh, yes. It's me, Uncle Greg. You made him laugh. Oh, what? man. What? Yeah, the Iconics haven't uh, impressed as I'm, much I'm as I think people want them. Me too, but I think they haven't impressed as much as people want them to. No. Plus, it, it, you know, it doesn't help that. I find SmackDown's women's matches bookings have been very inconsistent. Six woman tags. Six, Six woman, woman tag. tag. And Road guess dog. what the Riot Squad brought with them to Raw? Six woman, woman tags. tags. So, I mean, that's where it's going there. Um, but, yeah, so Rousey versus Jax, uh, that's going on at Money in the Bank. It'll be interesting to see what they book for that um, and uh, the way they do that storyline. Uh, other big things from the show. Uh, what what are some other big things? Uh, uh, Nakamura and Styles were going to yep. get another match. I can't believe WWE had been able to do it, but they – Maybe find a way to not want another Styles Nakamura match. To not want it, or I don't want to see it. No, I don't. I don't really have a desire because no, it has to be a good gimmick to get me behind that match. Yeah, like Last Man Standing or whatever. But on a pole, on a pole, <laughs> Last Man Standing on a pole with a coal miner's glove. <laughs> Could well, you imagine? Remember what AJ was talking? He was talking about a Hell in a Cell bull rope infernal in like a canine. Oh, yes. The yeah. promo was like he just listed everything that WCW and Attitude Era Raw ever oh did in one match. And, it's like, and then Renee Young said, is that the one where the referee dresses as Elvis? <laughs> no, Renee, don't be stupid. <laughs> Come on, Renee. Um, another thing we want to bring up, uh, big fans of the B team. Yes. Big I fans know. of the B Huge team. Huge fans of the B team. Like the B team. Got a quick royal wedding joke. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Let's hear it. Let's hear the royal wedding joke. Well, the, the commentators were talking about the royal wedding happening in town. I didn't know that Jerry Lawler was getting remarried. Mmm, very nice. Very nice. Um, nice. <laughs> <laughs> very nice. There you go. Yeah. Um, and uh, Andrade. Oh, we should also talk about this before we head to commercial. Bobby Lashley's sisters. We're going to meet him. We're going to meet him next week. I'd like to bring up, if possible, the the tag team match that Braun Balor, Ziggler, and McIntyre sure. had because of the botch at the end where they broke Braun's trophy. Yep. That's too It bad. was a botch, <laughs> and now the trophy's dead. Yep, the trophy's dead. The trophy's Ding is done, dead the trophy's the, dead. The trophy's as dead as, as, uh, as, dead as the uh, title belt is. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I think that's just sitting on his bookshelf. Now. Yeah, probably. If is it sitting? Books, well... If he's a reader, that is. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I really want to talk about Bobby Lashley's sisters. I know yes. that that statement came off a little weird. Next week, it's going to be a good episode. <laughs> oh, I know. We may have an early uh, contender for a worst segment of the year next year, next week. Oh, think it's going to be that bad? Oh, that's what I've been hearing. I think Sami Zayn's going to take it to the next level. Sammy, not, but then again, we all thought that Alexa Bliss was going to be able to do the This Is Your Life. Oh, no, no, no. Really I'm well. not saying that it's going to be great. Next level. I'm going to say he's going to take it from the bottom barrel and he's going to bring it to average. Gotcha. It, it won't be as horrible as we all think. I hope. I hope. For the love of God, let's please hope. Please don't bury Sammy like that. Yeah, please. Sammy's he's in his got element right now. Not kids. <laughs> <laughs> he's in his element right now. Absolutely. Uh, he's he's absolutely in his element. So. I, I I don't know about this. I'm, I'm nervous, especially the way that Lashley's been booked. Uh, Lashley's new. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, new as in like. Well, new as in like we haven't seen him in a while, so he's. As in go. like reuse, reusable, like recyclable. Wait. As in we use him again, but. Yeah, but he's we, being built right now. Yes. Uh, through his three sisters, I oh, we'll call him Black Lesnar. No, Vince. <laughs> no, <laughs> Vince. No, Vince. Vince. No, we can't do that. Yeah, you gotta do it. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I mean, it's 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 gonna be interesting what sure happens next week. Cause yeah. cause isn't it amazing how we went from uh, post Raw, where uh, sorry the Raw after Mania, where it's like Lashley comes back, it's like oh we could get Lashley versus Lesnar, to now we're gonna be finding out his three sisters and how they beat him up as a kid or whatever, like sibling rivalry. Yeah. This is going to be a fun That's edition of That's the stuff of I live for in wrestling, though, whether it's good or bad. Well, there you go. Are we going to see one of uh, Lashley's three sisters challenge James Ellsworth for the Intergender Championship? Probably not. Probably I mean, not. Wrestling back. Right? Unless, unless it's one of the independent wrestlers, then maybe. Ooh. Ooh. Maybe that could happen. What? Uh, that, this, this is at this seg- This uh, I, 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 I'm waiting with <laughs> bated breath for this segment next week. So. Yeah. 
Anyways, we're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to bring you to our uh, interview, yeah. actually. So, uh, it's a special little duel thing with the WrestleCast. Yeah. Um, we're going to be talking with Pat Lazinski. He records the shows for C4 Wrestling. Yeah. And uh, we're going to talk about that, just go through some filmmaking aspects, what it's like to record uh, for professional wrestling, especially yeah. for a company like C4. Um, what with what them being arguably, they're definitely a really exciting promotion coming out of here in Ottawa. Oh, yes. Absolutely. I just oh, yes. wish I could get tickets. Oh, I know. They, they, they sell out so quick. Um, but uh, with that, we'll take that quick commercial break. You're listening to Wrestling With Ideas right here on CKDJ 1079 Ottawa's New Music. Hey, this is MJF, and you're listening to Wrestling With Ideas, unfortunately. Goodbye. Because my name is Maxwell Jacob Friedman, and I'm better than you. And you know it. I'm not a narcissist. It's only a little flame. I'm not a arsonist. It's only a little pill. I'm not a pharmacist. It's only a little love. I'm not a narcissist. I feel marvelous. I'm feeling Welcome back inside the CKDJ felt. Studios I for, I guess it's a double. A double. It's a dual interview. It's a double double, like uh, Tim Hortons. This is the yeah. Parts Unknown WrestleCast alongside Wrestling with Ideas. Yeah. I am the man they call the music man, Colin Scully. Alongside me, the man they call Gibby, <laughs> yeah. Zach McGibbon. I was just going to say, I thought you were going to take my gimmick there for a minute. I almost might. Uh, <laughs> and alongside us in studio for an interview today, uh, we've got Patrick Lazinski, the head cinematographer i guess you can call him for c4 wrestling you do some work for acclaim as well yeah yep, how are you yep. doing today patrick i'm doing good thanks for asking how are you i'm doing all right yeah i'm good we're happy to have you on I'm it's happy uh, to be it's, here. it's gonna be interesting too because uh it's it's interesting you get a perspective from like a cinematographer in terms of filming wrestling and that sort of deal so mm -hmm. glad mm -hmm. to have you on man it's it's oh. it's it's uh it's gonna be a really good interview I, i'm really right. feeling it yeah so. i'm so <laughs> so uh Going back, uh, how long have you been a have you been a wrestling fan before you started working for C Four and Acclaim? Ah, uh, definitely. And yeah. uh, wrestling has been like I think one of my uh, my oldest obsessions uh, right. ever since I've been uh, like yeah ever since I've been like five or six. I've yeah. just been obsessed with it. Yeah. Yeah. Who are your some of, who are some of your favorite uh, it's, favorite guys? Um, it's kind of weird. Matt Hardy was like one of my oh, favorite yeah. dudes growing up, and then, <laughs> I wouldn't like, say that's weird. And like well, I hated everybody was, 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 you probably are like, oh, why don't you like Jeff Hardy? Yeah, Sorry, but dude. I was always a mad guy yeah, for yeah, some yeah, reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was just really into camel pants, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and well, then, Ma uh, Matt Rock certainly rocked the camel pants. Oh, definitely, man, <laughs> definitely. And then at first I really hated Edge, but then I started to love him because I hated him so much. And yeah. I was like, man, yeah. he's a really good heel. So yeah. I think like Matt Hardy and Edge just really uh, like their whole storyline is what yeah. got me into it. And they were like wow. my two top favorite guys for for big while. That's awesome. Yeah. That's it's funny how it's like your two favorite wrestlers are the ones that <laughs> Yeah. When it when it gets each other, it's like, oh I love both these guys. These exactly. Both, both these guys are killing each other. Yeah. Yeah. So going like I guess talking a little bit more about the local stuff now. How long have you been working for the C four and acclaim? Um, I think it's gonna be about like two years now. Okay. Yeah, it was a pretty slow process. It's it's kinda weird. Like I've I've uh I've always wanted to master everything, like, video. Well, not really master it, but, like, be right. confident in, in my skills before uh, attempting to go into wrestling. Cause I right, because really wanted... you, do, you do some other things that aren't wrestling. Yeah, exactly. You yeah. do, like, I think it's music. You do music videos. Yeah, commercials. Commercials uh, and that. I work on, like, short TV shows also. Yeah, yeah, like, all cool. kinds of professional stuff. But it's just, like, I wanted to bring something new to wrestling. So Is I wrestling to... the thing that you'd probably be the most into in terms of what you do? Yeah, definitely. It's like yeah. the only thing I ever show up in time for. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. in terms of, uh, as well, the cinematography. So is that why you got into cinematography? Like you just like, oh, I really want to shoot wrestling, you know, it's just like, kind of videotape it. Like some, like one, like some part of it, like definitely. Cause I, I've always been a big fan of uh, WWE's production quality. So yeah. like that's always mm -hmm. been, uh, something I've been a fan of, like their video packages and whatnot. And uh, I actually started like videos at like 12, 11, doing stop motion with, with wrestling figures. Okay, cool. Oh, nice. So then I like, I went up to like doing skate videos and then music videos and stuff yeah. like that. And the whole wrestling stuff got kind of buried. But yep. as I grew older, I kind of stopped like being mm. ashamed of it because yeah. it was kind of, I don't know, it was always like my biggest yeah. love. So I'm pretty pumped like to, oh, to yeah. be doing it for yeah. two years now was there was there any other influences in terms of 
the production style for camera work like some people like the wcw style yeah. uh maybe even recently like you see progress has such a great production yeah, crew yeah. is there any other styles that you kind of take into your cinematography or? uh de- like definitely uh, progress is is one of the is like th- that's one of the independent feds that really like showed me that it was possible to to have like a really nice aesthetic with DSLRs because yep. usually they always shoot with uh, camcorders and yep. you don't have like that same depth of feel where like yeah. where the background's blurry and the mm-hmm. foreground's kind of clear. So progress really uh, sh- like showed that that was possible. And but the, like the one right before progress that really opened my eyes was Lucha Underground because they were right. just so yeah. different. Yeah, and I've just sort of really this is. I'm sort of a newcomer when it comes to yeah. wrestling that isn't WWE. And when I came across, I was I was trying to watch uh, Beyond the Mat on Netflix actually, yeah, and nice. I came across Lucha Underground, and yeah. I had I had known that it was a promotion, and I known that they yeah. had, that they had wrestling matches. I had, didn't know that it was produced the way that it is, kind of yeah. like a movie. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing, and it's yeah. almost like uh, I want to see more of that. Yeah, yeah. like. The the thing I like the most with them is they don't pretend like it's real. Like they they, right. they know it's a show, so they're like, okay, let's put some production quality and actually like right. not shoot it like it's a live sports segment and just do like mm-hmm. a movie scene for like, yeah. like each character. Like sometimes people die in this in the snip in the segments and stuff. It's mm-hmm. it's crazy. It's pandemonium. <laughs> is there is there like points of interest when you're recording a show? It's like I really got to make sure I get this in that sort of deal. Yeah. Like like you know how WWE like some of their points of interest they like to whenever there's an impact they zoom in and zoom out sort of deal (laughs) is there like a point of interest is like i really got to focus on this to really tell the story of the match yeah well like usually i like to to keep all the action head to toe like kind of new japan style where it's just like a nice sequence everybody's head to toe but when Mm -hmm. uh, there's any kind of storytelling involved like a selling or or like getting a heat i I usually tend to kind of get a closer shot of their face and Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and like I, I do the, this thing where like I'm close up when they're like when there's a build up and when the move happens I zoom out, but I don't do like the the WWE thing where they do like yeah the, the zoom zooms. in multiple times. <laughs> it's just like yeah. once it zooms out and it's yeah. that's it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I've been I'm pretty stoked with how it's coming out right now. So I, yeah, yeah, because you've been doing this for about two years, right? Yeah, yeah. So so is there things that you kind of learned along the way where it's like oh I should try this for the next show or even just like yeah. next match I'm gonna try <laughs> this sort of deal. Yeah, like one thing I noticed is because uh, for C4, I'm not the one editing. I'm just uh, filming. So right. I noticed that like um, the, the editors like sometimes has like preferences. Like he, he, he likes the like if the wrestlers are being presented, he really wants to have like the, the shot with the face, like matching the hard cam. Yep. And uh, so like I, I've always adjusted towards him, but I don't know. It's, I've, I've kind of always had the like. I'm I'm such a wrestling nerd that I just I know like the move that that's gonna happen so I yeah. just follow it yeah. <laughs> and I'm yeah yeah well that's a good thing to have though is like at least you know what's gonna happen next and that makes for yeah. some even better you know camera shots yeah right? but sometimes I, like I'm expecting like a hurricane run or something but they like, yeah. switch it to, to DDT so I like I kinda oh have to yeah <laughs> go back so you have a little bit of a fidget sometimes yeah but. so it's it's a win like it sometimes it sucks sometimes it's good but. Mm-hmm. It's been working out. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, so, so are you the one just kind of getting a general grasp here? So, are you the one that brings the cameras over to the show? Like, it's all your equipment? Yeah, yeah. Like, for a while back, they were at, like they were they were always doing videos, but the quality was pretty, um, like amateur. You know, yeah. it was just like camcorders. At, yeah. And when I came in, I was originally at filming a documentary, and I'm still actually working on that same documentary okay. with uh, Evil Uno. Okay, cool. And the you got the Evil Uno shirt on. Yeah, as exactly. Well. <laughs> I'm a huge Evil Uno mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, like through that, I kind of like because like in wrestling, even if you're offering everything for free and you have crazy production quality, you always have to pay your dues. They won't let you like take uh, anything for granted. So yeah. I, I I had to really prove to them that I wanted to be there. So like after like one year of te- of putting the ring up and tearing it down and yeah. doing like free highlight videos, he was like he let me. Uh, like use my cameras for the for the show so like Mm -hmm. i my camera is the hard cam my camera i'm also i do the roaming yeah and so i kind of like i set up the hard cam at at, at first i give directions and then i do the roaming so it's i'm just doing like all the direction of photography Mm -hmm. basically yeah 
And uh, yeah, so, so far, uh, Mark, the, the booker is really hyped with how it's coming out. Like yeah. all the wrestlers are super pumped. Uh, yeah. Like the. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Like well, I, I actually in my backpack right now, I have one of the shows with a Biff Busick on it. Yeah. Uh, and I remember seeing that and like seeing the camcorders and then seeing one of your shows recently. It's nice. like you could definitely <laughs> tell there's a big boost in terms of the quality of production yeah. and the way you do camera shots and all that sort of stuff. Oh, now, is when you do ringside, just yeah. for the people that maybe haven't been to a C4 show, do you just do like a steady cam or do you just go hands on with the DSLR or you have like a stand, you know, that kind of yeah. level levels it out? That's sort of deal. <laughs> I kind of like to go rogue. So I just um, I have this like really shitty shoulder mount. <laughs> that's like I, I don't even put it on my shoulder. I just like, yeah, like put it across my chest. So that way I can like I can uh, mess with the lens and the focus. Yeah. And uh like I'm I'm always between the the bottom rope and the second rope. So yep. it's I'm just like right in there. You can you don't really see the ropes, you just mm -hmm. see the people. It's it's like I, it really hurts my back cuz I'm always arched, but yep. uh, the shots look they're, they're like the best shots that I can get. So mm -hmm. Maybe one day I'll have like a stabilizer going around. Like yeah. I don't know if you've seen the Fed Riptide wrestling. Yes. Oh, they've got some great production yeah, there as well. There's like three guys with stabilizers just running around. Oh yeah, it's so good. <laughs> it, it's 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 incredible if you yeah. if, if if you get the chance. I've seen. I remember seeing something like that. It's it oh, sounds familiar. That's that's the promotion in the UK, right? I think so. Yeah, I think yeah. it's the UK, right? Yeah. I, I I mean, I remember see Keith, seeing Keith Lee on there, but yeah. he does he does the UK tours yeah. now. But mm -hmm. um, but going I, back, sorry, go sorry. I was just we were talking about some of the good productions aspect, and we were also talking yeah. about uh, NJPW. Gibby, I think you know what's coming here. Yep. Um, did you have a chance to see Strong Style Evolved from this past year? Oh, uh, the NJPW Strong Style Evolved, the one that the one that was. Uh, no, 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 not super oh, strong. Oh, the, the NJPW one, the one that was the, the one that Access TV did. I'm not sure. I, I've seen a lot of NJPW, but they have so many pay per views. I think it was in. Movie. Was it March? It was the yeah. It was the one that was in uh, Long Beach. It was that Long Beach. It was show. the pyramid. Okay. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I did see those. What yeah. was your opinion on uh, the uh, production quality there? <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> there's there's a lot of questions on like. Uh, uh, on their production quality because obviously they they were using access tv rather yeah. than new japan crew did you notice at all like a, a drop at all in, in the production quality or like it's it's kind of far in my in in my mind but yeah. uh like roh is always kind of hit or miss sometimes mm -hmm. i don't know that's that's kind of been the story of the promotion yeah. though haven't they like like sometimes they have really nice production quality and sometimes yeah. it kind of just looks like uh like local like local television but yeah all in all, like the wrestling is really is really good. Yeah. So, and do you think know. that also just kind of helps boost your production as well? If the wrestling's really good, it just makes your camera work all the more better. Oh, definitely, yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're yeah. probably like, oh, thank God they have this great match yeah. going. It's making it's looking really good. It makes on your screen. job easier that way. You don't have to do too too much. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's also funner to film like a, like wrestlers that have a good rhythm. That way, it's like you're you're always mm -hmm. like following action and stuff. Because mm -hmm. like there's a lot of wrestlers that. I don't know they, they do like useless spots or like they, 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 they stick around with like with stuff that doesn't really work well on camera and it's kind of hard to film but uh, it, yeah. it's it, it's a weird world when it's in with when it's indie wrestling because they make more money when it's a live show than with the DVD so it's kind of yeah. more like uh, the, 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 the live audience is the priority yeah no right. definitely now it was funny I, I didn't know that you were also working with acclaim because acclaim hadn't been doing a bunch of they were doing the camcorder thing as well yeah uh so are you so you're doing the video as well for for acclaim yeah yeah and like that one's a really slow uh, project it's like basically what we're gonna do um i've talked with Chaz about it and it's yeah. uh we're gonna be like like i've i'm filming and editing all the shows completely um i'm doing like all so the you graphics. got like full control over how it's gonna yeah. come out okay. and it's it, it, like the, the the lighting is really dim over there, but right. except from that, like I, I think it looks really good. Yeah, um, I'm really pumped. I, I I can't wait to release it. Yeah, and uh, so is it like DVDs or is it like it's gonna just be? Yeah, I'm I'm thinking like the first few shows are gonna be for free, okay. and they're gonna be on YouTube. Like I really want to get more free wrestling out there just yep. to get like the most views possible. Is the mm -hmm. June second show gonna be one of these? Yeah, like all the shows that what I'm filming. The the thing is though is like I've been filming since uh, last September. Okay, okay, and so I think we're like we're gonna release. The September 2017 show on September 2018 and just oh, like, like a year October deal. and like everything. Gotcha. A year, yeah. Yeah. Because so like, it was interesting because I talked with Chaz uh, last year yeah. after the whole 
buy town deal. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> uh, which yeah. which we'll talk about another day because it's already <laughs> been beaten to death. Oh yeah. But uh, <laughs> the whole buy town thing when we did the show with uh, Chaz, mm-hmm. uh, I, and I did the interview with Chaz after that whole scenario. Uh, he was just talking about, yeah, you know, we'll always look into other options, but right now we're just kind of a live attendance yeah. thing. So it was interesting that timing kind of works out as well. Yeah. Uh, you're recording the shows, and so I, that also just kind of shows the growth of Acclaim because they've been selling out shows oh. like, like mad. Like it's tough to get a ticket to an Acclaim show. Yeah, like the crowd is really, really, really into into the show. Like they have the, the, the regulars. It's, it, it's like it's almost – always the same people it's always sold out but it's always like the same people that get their tickets i have a question for the both of you okay because gibby i because i know you've been at acclaim shows and c4 shows yeah i have not been to an acclaim show you have not been to an acclaim show literally because i can't get a ticket (laughs) (laughs) you've been to c4 i could probably get your ticket then hey yeah as As somebody who's going to be helping out within the next couple shows i think i'm not sure about the may 25th but i know i'm going to be working with Chaz on the june 2nd show what do I need to expect from the shows overall? Well, for C4, expect to, yeah. if, they're, if you're working security, expect to be moving a lot because yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of moments where they dive into the crowd. And yeah. I'm sure oh, going on that, actually, uh, in terms of like when they do go into the crowd yeah. and chairs, it's like, does that make filming a little tougher? Because then you have to, yeah. you know, move away from the rain. It's like, oh, I've got to follow them now. Because <laughs> um, I remember there was the one spot uh, when Speedball and Mike Bailey went into the hallway and did this long run, I think it was against Matthew Saint Jacques. Yeah, and he did a kick on on the guys in the chair. I remember it was a camera shot following uh, uh, Bailey all the way into the hallway. Yeah, um, but it was like a far away shot. You saw saw him like a burst of speed <laughs> kicking. Um, how do you like on the fly? You were like, oh man, I gotta I gotta follow this action because yeah. there's so much commotion and a ton of people in there. Like, how do you rec- film oh, all man, that? It's- like to me, that's the funnest part of C four. It's like it's, it's fucking pandemonium. Like, <laughs> I don't mean to swear. I'm sorry, but that's yeah. all good. We'll we'll censor it out. C four gets it out of me. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, it's like it's it's just it's pure like rated R pro wrestling. Yeah, like it, to to like it's I don't know. Like in my mind, it's kind of like ECW meets PWG yeah. kind of. Like, Plus, this is also kind of meeting, answering yeah. your question at the yeah. same time. It's like yeah. what to expect, for, at least from C4 perspective. Yeah, like every main event so far that I've filmed, like completely, they just destroy. Like all the chairs are fucking, uh, all, all the chairs <laughs> are everywhere. Like there's pandemonium, there's tables broken. There's like, so like C4 is basically is, is the best show to go to if uh, like you just want to get really rowdy and see some really raunchy stuff and like yeah. see some crazy spots. And oh, the claim awesome. is kind of more like. Uh, like really long development for stories. It's more family friendly. Um, it's like two really completely different vibes. Uh, yeah. Like acclaim is more like like they, they stick with the same roster and like they they really have like this TV show feel. Even though it's kind of ironic that they they have like the whole live audience uh, yeah. only thing for for so long. But C four is just like they bring in like new talents all the time. Like yeah. Eli Everfly is coming next show. Yeah. Like Keith. That's Lee, a really good wrestler. Simon Grimm. Like all yeah. the. It's insane. So. And they Simon always Grimm's deliver. gonna be there. Uh, well, he oh, he was, was the there. Last show. Oh, yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the like the PCOs could be at a future show. I could confirm I, that. I've been like, <laughs> I've been uh, hassling Mark to book uh, Joey Janela versus PCO. <laughs> oh, I know. I think that's. I think that's going on in GCW, isn't it? Oh, in maybe. Game Changer. Maybe. I think that. I think that match is happening in Game Changer, but I would love to see it yeah. here in Ottawa. I, I was gonna hit up Joey and be like. Are you planning on booking this? Because if not, like I'm gonna, <laughs> like, I'm gonna attack my Mark to book this. Like I really want him to book this. Yeah. Just PCO against anybody. Like that oh, match P- against Walter was freaking. Incredible. Oh man, <laughs> we I, I reviewed uh, uh, just for the podcast. I reviewed uh, Spring Break Two. Nice. Um, and and I remember watching <laughs> and watching that PCO Walter match. My buddy Marco Rossi, nice guy, he, but he's got a very old school thought in yeah. terms of professional wrestling, right? Um, like loves going back watching the NWA and yeah. old WWF, right? And he yeah, he used to be a big PCO fan, like even when he was Jean Pierre Lafitte back nice. in the mid <laughs> early nineties, right? And uh, we were watching that PCO Walter match, and he was blown away. He was like, "Wow, this is like PCO was awesome in this, like fifty years old." He's he's a madman. Yo, you know, you're doing something right when you can pull off the split legged moon salts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, at fifty. Oh, plus two. You know, the one thing that PCO does well as well, 
yeah. well as well, <laughs> is uh, the promos that he puts out on Twitter <laughs> and Facebook. Have you seen these promos? The cut where, the deck. Yeah, the cut the deck. Have you promo. seen the new one where he's do, where he's doing with his, with his mouth? teeth? Yeah, yeah he uh, cuts the deck in half with I his teeth. I haven't seen that one. Oh, I, it's I crazy. The, one with the metal bar was just like. Rah! Oh, the the <laughs> pan. Oh my god. <laughs> What's going on with the gun? The gun? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. my God. What is going on? Like, <laughs> Oh, my God. PC on, man. He, the guy's he, insane. The guy's insane. Super nice guy, though. Like, yeah. When we did, when we did episode 100 of the show, it was a live show, yeah. and he called into the show to say congrats. Oh, that's so awesome. He, so, yeah. he's, so he's a super nice guy. Yeah, he's um, and, and I've had some chats with uh, Pierre, uh, well, Carl, uh, after uh, the interview we did uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, and he's he's just been killing it, and he's gonna face Matt Riddle soon. Yeah. And so it's like he's just like they're just booking him against everybody. Yeah. Like I'm waiting for PCO versus Nick Gage at some point. Like I know that's gonna happen. Uh, um, but like, uh, yeah, that match really stole the show. Like the oh, standing ovation and everything. Like I gave the, me chills. The chops. Yeah. Oh, the the ending sequence too. When oh, uh, Walter chopped in, then PCO chopped yeah. in, then Walter gave the handshake out. Loved oh, it. Yeah, that was so epic. good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> actually, too, uh, on the basis of promos, uh, do wrestlers come up to you and be like, "Hey, c- can you record a promo for me?" Surprisingly, no. And wow. I, I and I, I'm pushing them to to do more so because yeah. like they they always shoot it on their iPhones and like sometimes I have like my my whole setup and they're just like right next beside me with the iPhone like doing yeah. a promo and I'm like, "Yo, let's." Let's film it on the camera. Like, yeah. like I'm doing this. I, I'm not getting, like, I recently just started to get paid by the wrestling feds, and I've always been doing it for free, just, like, investing yeah. all the time I Kind can. of proving yourself on yeah. the scene, right? And also, it's like, I just really want to to step up, like, the wrestling scene and try to, like, yeah. to give it, like, a better quality, mm-hmm. put more eyes on it. Like, I think it's the best time to do it right now. Like, it's, oh, yeah. It's starting to... You got cool, all man. in selling 10,000 tickets in under half an hour. Exactly. Like indie wrestling just seems yeah. hot right now. So yeah. it's uh, it's definitely, you know, just getting bigger by the minute. But I'm kind of surprised, you know, like somebody like like obviously like would you would in some scenarios would you do it for free? And then some scenarios it's like got to get paid. Yeah. So like, like right now, since I like now I'm doing I'm filming it. I'm filming C4, but uh, Matt Hack edits it. Yep. Uh, acclaim, I film and edit it, and uh, La Descente du Coude in Montreal, yep. uh, LDDC. Like, I film yep. and edit it now. Gotcha. And so, and like also, uh, the fest- like the festival that was in the hall at Tran- Transistor, yeah. like, I filmed and, and edited I film and edit that whole thing as yeah. well. Yeah. And uh, that was that uh, podcast festival, right? Yeah. With Dreamer and, and that Uno show was, was, main event? was surprisingly good. Like, really? It was, freaking amazing like, the production <laughs> quality was really good because they had a like a whole li- a lighting team oh wow and there was like it added so much depth and it was like custom lighting stuff for all the entrances because yeah. i remember like, people were like is this a legit show you yeah, know because yeah. it's like we weren't expecting tommy dreamer to be made of anything yeah. against evil uno of all people no, you no know? it was fucking it, it was really sweet it was like a six match super tight super fun show yeah. like the crowd was really hot it was like it sold out in a tent yeah, uh, and on camera, like so far, I think it's the show that looks the best on camera. Like it cool. looks really, really crisp. Wow. I can't wait to release it. Yeah. Oh, that's gonna be awesome! I'm, I'm gonna keep keep yeah. uh, keep an eye on that. One yeah. question that I have with the um the recent LDDC with the uh, yeah. the cup that just happened, what are your thoughts on Thomas Dubois and win and him winning that? Yeah, I thought that I thought it was a cool decision. Uh, yeah, and the way they did it as well was was pretty cool. Like it, it just it made sense with with how it was built. Uh, like Matt mm-hmm. Angel had a big match, and then there's a guy that's lighting it up right now. Yeah, Matt yeah, Angel. yeah, exactly. And like everybody's putting him over. So yeah. I mean, I think like at the end it was Matt Angel versus Toma Dubois, but during that ma- uh, during that night. Tama had a squash match where like he won with just one finisher right. and Matt Angel had like a 15 minute match so yeah. it ended up being those two they had like a long match but yeah. Ed's boy ended up winning by it was a, it was like a submission but he didn't tap it was mm-hmm. he like just gave up yeah, yeah. so yeah it was uh, it was really cool like Tama works really hard he yeah. he deserves it he's battle war champion as well so I don't know yeah, I kind of would have liked that to see like a fresh face, like maybe like Kevin Blanchard win it or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, and uh, as somebody who's sort of unfamiliar and just sort of starting to break into watching some more of this stuff out in Quebec, yeah. Um, last week I had had an interview with Benjamin Tull, I think it was nice. last week, and um, one of the matches that came up that I watched on YouTube was the was FLQ Roof Mania, nice. Uh, at, in the pool there. Yeah, yeah. There's a spot where uh, Tabarnak the team, I think it was Mathieu Saint Jacques, that had gorilla pressed uh, Benjamin's tag team partner into the ring from the second level. 
<laughs> are, are are the are the uh, pr- uh, promotions out in Quebec known for more of this sort of like a hard hitting s- style of wrestling? There, um, I'm not sure if it's like, well, like maybe Quebec because like the people in Quebec are really passionate and stuff. Right. So, uh, <laughs> so it kind of translates into wrestling. But like every time you see Matthew Saint Jacques and Tabo Zbo on a card, like you're you're bound to see some pandemonium because yeah. yeah, those two guys just love to to like. To destroy, stuff. like <laughs> oh, yeah. Jacques, like some, like I've, like I, I've seen him like in, during one night go through like uh, thumbtacks f- like from a superplex and then go through a table, get like a fireball in the face, and then like he, he's in the backstage and I'm talking to him and he's, and he's just like, oh yeah, that was so much fun. <laughs> like, I, I can't wait to do it again. It's just fun for me. You know what <laughs> I want to see is uh, Tabarnak the team. With Paceo is like a Paul Ellering style oh, thing. That'd, that'd be, be cool. Nice. Yeah. Because cool. The, 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 it all works. <laughs> Definitely works. It could work. Yeah. Maybe you could do like uh, TDT as a as a new Mountie sort of gimmick yeah. with Paceo. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, something. something tells me that the uh, Mathieu Saint Jacques would not go for it. <laughs> probably not. He probably not. But the, they're, they're they're pretty huge like old school wrestling marks. Really, like, yeah, Matt Saint Jacques and Tom Woodsboy. <laughs> I did. I I actually was not expecting that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, they love like the, well, I mean, Master Saint Jacques in, in particular, like he he loves to watch those like uh, those like crazy WCW main events like between like oh, Buff Bagwell yes. and Kevin Nash, <laughs> <laughs> and he just like he oh loves that God. shit. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Yeah, I love yeah. That. so you can yeah, sometimes man. like see in his taunts like he's doing like an old school Kevin Nash NWO taunt <laughs> and stuff, stuff like that. He, he's well, he's not like too sweet and everything. No, no, he's not. Like, too sweet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's more subtle than that. Yeah. But he's, He's throwing Easter eggs out there for sure. <laughs> Just to see if anybody notices. Yeah, it's yeah. like, oh, I watched that WCW show exactly. you know, from 1998. <laughs> oh, I love that. That's awesome. Yeah. I love when I love when wrestlers are able to do that. Just take like subtle, like they're not like blatant about it they just take subtle little hints from mm-hmm. yeah. from like older shows and just kind of incorporate them into their characters yeah. i i actually really like those because it makes them modern yeah. again it makes them new and fresh exactly. again so and usually like the, the like wrestlers they just do it for other wrestlers where like backstage they're like oh did you yeah. see me do that like oh shit and they just oh, like, they mark out <laughs> between themselves yeah they have their own little yeah. moment of marking out yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it was it, it was funny you were asking about like the quebec stuff in terms of mm-hmm. uh is like is it known to be that crazy I'm like commentating, commentating for, for torture, torture chamber. chamber. It, I'm like, I'm like, it's it's not that crazy. Yeah, you know what okay. I mean? Like torture chamber is more like in ring base. Like right. everything's yeah. in the ring. Well, and plus they got a you, lot of really. You mentioned good. that I had had an interview. I had done the interview uh, today mm-hmm. with Oliver Strange. Oh, yeah. nice. Oliver Strange, and then it, yeah. So Oliver Strange, right? Yeah. He was yes. talking about his training. Yep. And I had asked him then about uh, the Sheldon Jean thing. Yeah. No, that he's was very good as well, Sheldon, Sheldon Jean. Jean. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they were talking about how the training there is similar to the one out in Japan, right? With yeah. what with the whole wrestling based thing. Mm. Yeah, because we, co- we we had Sheldon Jean on the show right. as well. And he was talking about like the young lion lifestyle and yeah. Noah, and it was like yeah. he said it, for him it was more difficult because it was like. You had to do like you know the fifty squats and whatever, yeah. and then they train you. But then all of a sudden you have to go out there and wrestle a twenty minute match against Ogawa, yeah. Yeah. and you're like, what? Like my, I just I just did all these torturous drills, and now I got to go out yeah. and have a twenty minute classic with Ogawa. And my bad, it wasn't Oliver Strange that I was talking to talking about with Japan. It was uh, Stefan Paulson. Oh, yeah, okay. Paulson's so, very good. Either way, they're both wrestling a torture chamber this Saturday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Huh. So, um, but uh, yeah, that's uh, it was it was an interesting perspective there. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, any any other big projects that you're looking at? Like, not even just wrestling, because obviously, like, yeah. we're, the station we're on is like local Ottawa music. So, yeah. is there any like other big projects? Like you you mentioned as well, the rap uh, music videos, yeah, yeah. just music videos in general. Any other big projects going on? Uh, yeah, I'm I'm working on a music video with uh, Buck and Nice. It's gonna be my second. Oh, we have song. them on the station here. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah. Well, they're they're big on college radios and stuff. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I'm doing a video with those with those guys. They're really good friends. It's uh, it's always a fun time to work with them. That's cool. Uh, I just released my first uh, like hand drawn animation video. Oh which, wow! Yeah, I had a, like a really good response. So that's cool. I released that for sure. Where can we find that? It's uh on the uh, you can find it on. Actually, it's not on my website yet, but I'll put it on there. It's mm-hmm. on uh, WWE 
at www. <laughs> WWE's picking it up. Wow. <laughs> Who? Thinking about wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> My mind's on wrestling. <laughs> that's at www.plozprod.com. So that's P L O Z P R O D. Dot com. Cool. Yeah, I'll make and sure to link that in the uh, podcast notes there. Yeah, yeah. for the, like in, on, on that you have all the sections. You have music videos. You have uh, is your, some of your wrestling stuff. Stu- is your wrestling stuff up there? Cool. Yeah, yeah. But like, it's just a little bit of stuff. It's like yeah, the, yeah. the highlight videos I do for C four and yeah, and just to get just stuff. so that they can get a taste. Yeah, but eventually yeah. there's going to be like a whole like full shows and full matches. Is that where you're going to be? Cool. Is that where you're thinking of putting the acclaim stuff? Uh, yeah, well, it's going to be on my website, but it's also going to be on uh, the, their own uh, YouTube, YouTube channel. channel. Right, right, I'm right. also thinking of uh, like kind of linking up all the indie feds that I film for and uh, have my own like kind of network where I shoot like one free match a week to kind of help them oh, get cool, exposure. Oh, cool, cool. So kind of like uh, like what uh, sometimes Powerbomb will do. Yeah, like I know yeah. Powerbomb did that for a little bit where they would release a free match from one of their promotions that they have on their uh, service. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. yeah. So that's cool, man. Like it, this is this is really cool, man. Yeah. <laughs> just just getting to hear. Uh, it's really different... cool getting an interview because a lot of the times you you get interviews with the wrestlers yeah. and people on your side of the thing are sort of just put off to the side. But it's good. Yeah. I like yeah. I like doing interviews like this just to see what it's like. I think yeah. you can say this like, as well. Oh yeah, like uh, we what I did a I did a chat with uh, Adam B from C4, yeah, the commentator, yeah, and we great. literally went an hour and a half just you know talking stories on the road and that sort of stuff and we ended up talking about the texas tornado nice. for for some reason i don't even remember why we talked about carrie carrie von eric but it came up in the conversation and we ended the i ended that i remember ending that uh, interview as well with just the carrie von eric's uh, theme music but uh nice. but no it's super cool and obviously you know being a local music station as well where we do the show just kind of hearing the different projects as well that you're doing with uh, some of the artists i mean we got i know we i believe we have buck and nice on here as well if not we're definitely like going to put them on um (laughs) so we've 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 uh, definitely been keeping an eye on that and of course the wrestling stuff and just kind of mm-hmm. hearing the C- the whole deal with C4 and now yeah. hearing the stuff with the claim I didn't know about that stuff with the claim yeah. I guess that just goes to show how unplugged I am without uh, no, everything no, going on it's been really low key like I haven't even uh, put myself as like a any kind of job uh, oh yeah like I, I haven't it's not public yet that, yeah like, this is breaking news this is, this is an exclusive news. this is an exclusive <laughs> right here um, yeah. but no it's it's super cool and it's always interesting to get a backstage perspective like yeah. it's like uh, we've had like rest obviously wrestlers on wrestling with ideas before and and, and, rest, and the wrestle cast of course yeah um and also like i've gotten the chance to talk with some wrestling trainers as well and just gain and you've gotten sort of some production people as well i think yeah. with uh we had neil pruitt who produced the who did some producing for wcw back mm-hmm. in the day nice. you had teddy i think teddy lawn yeah <laughs> teddy lawn's a different you you teddy want, Long? yeah you want to hear a story about teddy lawn I want to, yeah, oh definitely. my god so I love teddy lawn <laughs> oh, oh my god his everything you think teddy lawn is on tv he is exactly that and oh, then that's more amazing. so that's amazing this was like <laughs> earlier on like when i took over the show what took over wrestling with ideas so I was like, oh, we need to get interviews. We got to, yeah. you know, establish credibility, right? Like we got to, you know, know that we're the real deal. So this was a little bit after Teddy got released. Oh, shit. And so we sent an email over. I sent an email over to Teddy. And uh, so about two days later, I got an email back. He's like, Monday, this time, call me. Like that's all I said. I put out this nice little detailed email. Yeah, it's like call it's like yeah, it's like, thank you so much. So I call over. So during that day, I call over, yeah. and I hear his voice, and I think it's uh, him. So I'm like, hey, Teddy is like, he's like, hey, what's up, players? This is Teddy Lawn. Uh, I'm currently not at the phone right uh. now, but I've got a representative from TeddyLawn.com on the line. Just wait there. And the hold music is this theme music. <laughs> so you're listening to the Mad Militant song, just like, just waiting till he, uh, till he picks up the phone. Yeah. Oh, and so amazing. we're sitting there, and like uh, it's me and one of the old co-hosts there, Brain Mayhew. Okay. And uh, then all of a sudden, he picks up the phone, and yeah. we were hesitant at first because we thought maybe it was still the answering machine, be like, <laughs> yeah. "Keep on a hold, player," you know, blah blah blah. blah. <laughs> and then finally, he picks up, and I was like, "He goes, hello." He's like, "Hey, is this Teddy Lawn?" He's like, "Yeah, what's up, player? How you doing?" <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's like, so great. It's like everything that you could imagine from Teddy Lawn. He's exactly that. 
Hey, Plan, I, I have a surprise. I got a <laughs> six-way interview for you. <laughs> six-way gauntlet match interview. I got you a one-on-one -on -one interview with The Undertaker. <laughs> but the uh, Undertaker. Man, I got some I got some different interview stories for days, but that is yeah. that's a totally different thing. Yeah, man. Uh man, it's cool to hear a bunch of the different projects you're doing, yeah. man. And uh Man, I wish he continued success. I, I mean, seeing oh, these, yeah. seeing the shows, seeing what C4 will release for clips, I'm like, wow, this is such a beautifully shot show. Oh, thanks so and, much. Uh, and I, and I yeah. know that, uh, and I know that the guys at uh, C4 and Powerbomb even as well are just like, man, <laughs> this is a really good quality uh, looking show. I hope show. so. I hope so. Oh, I, yeah. I haven't been getting like much feedback, but I've just been like, well, I'll tell you this right now. It's, it's I'll, <laughs> I'll tell you this right now. I having seen some of the full shows where you yeah. record the shows, they look gorgeous, my friend. Oh. Thank you so they much. look so good, and and I can tell you this for a fact: C4 is super happy to have you oh, on. I'm pumped. And uh, <laughs> continue doing the great work, man, because it's 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 awesome to see just the work you're putting mm -hmm. in. And I oh, hope more promotions you. pick you up. I really do. Oh yeah, it, it's crazy. Like it's starting. It, yeah. More and more people are hitting me up, and it's yeah. it's cool because I get to bring this uh, like new flavor to wrestling. Uh, yeah. Give a crisp HD <laughs> yeah. perspective, exactly. which uh, we don't really see often. Yeah. Even just filming wrestlers head to toe when they're doing moves. Yeah. Like we never see that. It's always f like a weird sideways angle of yeah. like they're like, like have their bodies. <laughs> yeah. It's like you never see like a suicide dive where like you see the whole wrestler in it. It's yeah. Like I'm just, I'm just there to get those shots <laughs> <laughs> no absolutely have you ever been in a situation where you're like let's say you're in between the bottom and the second row yeah and the wrestler sets up for a suicide dive but you don't have time to move out of the way so all you see if you're looking up is the wrestler go over top of you <laughs> and behind you yeah. has that ever happened i've had like similar like Similar situations, and during those times, I'm just praying the hard cam got a nice shot. Like, <laughs> yeah. I usually like right at intermission, I rush to it and I look at back. I look back at it, and I'm like, okay, yeah, okay, it's cool. <laughs> I'd love to see what this like if you could pause it and see if they have any facial expressions on there. <laughs> <laughs> like you zoom in, and then you just have them like, eh, or something. Oh, man, what? I, I could definitely blackmail a few wrestlers with, <laughs> oh! with some screenshots. <laughs> you may not want to say that over the radio, mind you, but <laughs> yeah, I know. They I have know. no shame. <laughs> Uh, I think that's it. Man. I that think, man. So yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks so much for coming on, man. That oh, was so much, man. No problem. I mean, so that was that was a ton of fun. And again, yeah, wish you continued success because it's just some fantastic looking shows. I'm not oh. not lying at all. Not lying at all. No. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. They, yeah, look, yeah, yeah. they look absolutely fantastic. Yeah. I wish you best of luck, man, and hope, hopefully more promotions continue to use your work, man, because it's fantastic. Oh, All right, so you. I'm going to use this opportunity here to wrap things up for the WrestleCast as well. So you can follow me on Twitter at CD underscore the music man. Yep. You can follow Gibby on Twitter at Raw is Gibby. You yep. can follow the podcast. You can follow Wrestling With Ideas at Wrestling With Ideas, or Wrestling Capital, Capital w, w Ideas Radio. I'm yep. sorry. Not radio. Now I got it. Radio's Instagram. <laughs> Sorry. Wrestling with Ideas Radio is Instagram. Yes. At Wrestling Capital W Ideas is on Twitter. Right. There you go. You can follow Pat on Twitter at. Uh, I think on Twitter I'm A Y P L O Z. But yeah, you can like. A Y P L O Z. I'll link it in the, I'll link it in the podcast. I'll, I will link it in yeah, the yeah. podcast I got notes. Hacked a few years ago and I had. To oh really? It. Oh yeah. no. Yeah, oh, that's that I don't sucks. remember it. But uh, on my website, you have the link to like every social media account. All right, right so I'll put that in the I'll put that in the podcast notes as well. But what is your website as well? It's www.pilasprod.com. Sounds All right. good. There you go. All right. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Parts Unknown Wrestlecast. And as always, have a good one. You know it's the Mac Militant Coming to get it all uh, uh, uh. Hey what's up players This is Teddy Long And I want you to know you're listening to the greatest wrestling show In all of the world CKDJ 107.9 Holla 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 Wrestling with ideas players Make sure you tune in And that's real talk Welcome back inside the CKDJ studios. This is Wrestling With Ideas right here on CKDJ 107.9, Ottawa's new music. I'm the man they call Gibby, Zach McGibbon, the music man Colin Scully, the man with no excuses, Jonathan Skuse. Hello. Thank you for coming on, my friend. First episode live in the studio. Um, now, usually you actually send us in questions every week, ranging from the comedic uh, to the actual questions. <laughs> um, now, uh, now that we actually have you here... 
we're gonna we have the guy here, the guy, the question guy. I am the guy, and the I guy. have done it there in the WWE, <laughs> there you as go. Booker T would say. <laughs> uh, so what questions, uh, do you have any questions for us? I do have a couple questions. All I right. have one question. What's the deal with Liv Morgan's blue tongue gimmick? I know, right? It's a, it's, I don't. Is she eating ring pops before her match? Is, uh, <laughs> I don't, I want to, I want to hear some answers, Having some guys. fruit gushers, maybe? Those fruit gushers, maybe the blueberry edition of fruit gushers? Go for yeah. You got nothing. You're like you nothing. I don't know. I don't know. Food coloring. Food coloring. Well, this is a radio show. There is an option that I'm thinking of, but ah. I'm not allowed to say it. So, <laughs> so, hey oh, all right. And uh, yeah, another good question I've got here is that as we know, the match that nobody asked for, Shinsuke Nakamura versus AJ Styles at Money in the Bank, is going to be a gimmick match. Yes. What gimmick is Shinsuke Nakamura gonna pick? It isn't going to be a brawl in the back of a hay wagon, empty Ooh. arena match, Ooh. coal miners glove match. Mm. What do you guys think Shinsuke is going to pick? Mm, that's a good. That's a good question. Um, I uh, do you Punjabi want the silly answer prison. or the real answer? Is it a Punjabi prison match? As a yes, no, darn it. it will. <laughs> I can almost guarantee, unless it's a triple threat with Jinder Mahal. It will not be a Punjabi prison. <laughs> Please, <match>. no. <laughs> oh my Please, God. no. It didn't work the first time. And it's certainly not going to work this time. Um, but uh, in terms of an actual match, I think it's going to be, I'm probably thinking last man standing. I think that's What, with the, the counting thing from, yeah. They bo- but guess what? They both kick each other in you know their areas, the baby factory, and they both are down for the 10 count so that they have another match. They kick That's each other right in the baby <laughs> factory. Think about, it, think about it, go guys. They could have their final blow off match at the appropriately named pay per view, Great Balls of Fire. Oh, goodness gracious! If they decide to bring that back next two months, which I, as far as I know, is not coming back. I'm pretty sure it won't be. But hey, I miss that pay per view. People were were messing with it. It's like you know what? At least it was something funny and creative. Well, creative, but more <laughs> funny. Um. But, uh, yeah, I, 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 in all honesty, probably going to be a last man standing match. Yeah. Uh, that's what I'm thinking. Last man or I quit, I think. Yeah, one or, one or the other. Could you imagine they both said, I quit? Well, I don't think they it would happen like that. They both are just kicking each other repeatedly <laughs> but, in the baby factory. But Gibby, and just... but Gibby Nakamura doesn't speak English. Ah, uh, that's true. Will they have to have a translator? Uh, that's <laughs> are we going to get Funaki? Oh, that, that's why Nakamura would pick it. Because he doesn't speak English. There you go. But he said this in the promo. He could just be saying it in Japanese oh. and they wouldn't know. Exactly. Unless he got Funaki a special guest mm. ref. Now, knowing Funaki, he'd probably screw... Uh, he, he, there's a chance that he screws Nakamura over. Could be. Mm, maybe. And uh, Funaki number one. Uh, with that, uh, I, that, that's, that does it for me. Uh, yeah. I So we'll wrap things up here. Yeah. Uh, thanks for coming on. Oh, absolutely. No problem. Pleasure was all mine. Oh, it was uh, fantastic to have you on. Uh, pretty eventful news week. Uh, yeah. I also want to thank Pat Lazinski for coming on to the show yeah. as well. Um, and uh, what's going on with the WrestleCast? WrestleCast this week, I recently just subscribed to Progress, yeah. to their uh, streaming service. So nice. I'm going to be doing... You in demanded addition- Progress. And yeah, got progress. <laughs> I I got what I wanted. Uh, so in addition, I'm going to be reviewing uh, Strong Style, Super Strong Style 16. Yep. And in addition to that, I'm going to be playing on. This is the podcast that I'm talking about here, not the radio yeah, yeah. show. Yeah. On the podcast, it's going to be the review from all three nights of Super Strong Style. Nice. As well as the three interviews. Yeah. That I've done this week. Yeah, that's. Uh, you had yourself quite a busy week, so that's going on the WrestleCast. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, what's, what's the link again? P P U wrestlecast dot podbean dot com. There you go. Uh, so, uh, yeah. In terms of what's going on with wrestling with ideas, we got two interviews next week that, uh, looks to be all but confirmed. Um, well, the first one I think is confirmed. Well, here I'll, I'll get to that one. But, yeah. uh, the one I've got so far, uh, Mark AP C4 wrestling oh, yeah. booker creator. Uh, we are going to do an interview with him. He's going to talk cool. about the recent move over to the uh, St. Anthony's, St. Hall. Anthony's Hall uh, for their recent show, They Live. Uh, he's going to talk about why they made that move, how C4 Wrestling is doing since the last time we talked to him, and uh, some of the big talents that are coming in. We actually had an exclusive here on the show. PCO is going to be going to a future C4 Wrestling show. Um, but also, the other interview we have that's looking to be coming up next week, uh, we have... The world's most dangerous man, K-1. 
Ken Shamrock is going to be on the show. And uh, he's actually going to be in Ottawa as well for his own little stand-up tour. Uh, so he's going to be on the show promoting that. Uh, we'll talk a little bit, uh, some wrestling during his time. I really want to talk to him about the WrestleMania 13 match, but he was the special guest referee. Uh, maybe talk a little bit of mixed martial arts. Maybe, maybe talk, talk his, Dan Severin. Maybe talk his debut. Yeah, definitely. Little Lion's Den. Little Lion's Den. Maybe I'll talk about that. You never know. Uh, so, yes, Ken Shamrock next week on Wrestling With Ideas. That's going to be a fun one. That's going to be a fun one. So uh, with that, uh, you can listen to older episodes of the show, including past interviews with the likes of Jake the Snake Roberts, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase, the the, 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 the Rick Steiner, the Rick Steiner. <laughs> there you go. The Dog Face Gremlin. Um, we also got Nick Aldis, Magnus, uh, and Cody Rhodes. Um, a lot of a lot of guys on there. Over twenty plus interviews to choose from, so you can go back to the archives there. Wrestlingwithideas.podbean.com. Listen on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Radio, TuneIn Radio, Player FM, many more. Uh, thanks for tuning in, everybody. We'll be back next week. Until then, have a good one. You have just listened to the greatest wrestling show on the planet. If you want to listen to older episodes of the show, including full interviews, make sure you check out Wrestling With Ideas on Podbean and on the Podbean app, or listen to us on our new SoundCloud page. We can also be found on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn Radio, Player FM, and many more. Make sure you keep on tuning in every Thursday at 6 p.m. to Wrestle With Ideas. 